My name is Abby. My, and? My name is Shannon. And we are going to be helping you in this. Alright, hi everyone. Um, Ms. Nelson here, ready to talk about some Hernie Weinberg equilibrium. Uh, quick update, I know you all got the email last night that we are e-learning through at least April 3rd right now. Uh, Mr. Trapagan and I are in constant contact with each other talking about how we can best support you through these e-learning days. A college board is currently working to make AP, access, AP testing accessible in some format for everyone, even if that means online testing at home in May. Um, so we are preparing for that as a possibility. Um, we are three quarters of the way through this year and we know you guys have got this. And so we are here to continue to support you guys as we finish this course um, and move on from evolution into ecology and then the end of the year. Um, so to talk about Hardy-Weinberg right now, um, just real quick wanted to go through the five conditions for Hardy-Weinberg. Uh, the idea is that Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, as the word equilibrium means, would show that there's no changes happening within the population, okay? Evolution is population changing over time. So if a population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then it would not actually be evolving and vice versa. Most populations are not going to be in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and when you look at these conditions, you would realize why. Condition number one, no mutations. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Their DNA never experiences any mutations for a specific allele, and so their DNA stays constant from generation to generation. Random mating. This does happen in nature. Uh, sea urchins are a good example of this, where Male sea urchins and female sea urchins release all of their gametes into the ocean all at once, and whichever gametes meet, meet, and so that would be considered random mating. Um, no gene flow, so organisms don't move from population to population. Wind can't spread pollen, water can't move things, nothing immigrates, nothing emigrates. You are where you are, and you stay put forever. Um, very large populations, so small islands would be exempt from this because they are very small populations. And then no natural selection, so nothing gives you a selective advantage to survive and reproduce and pass on your genes. So those are the five conditions that have to be met. If any one of those conditions is not met, we would say the population is not at Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, okay? We have two different equations that we're using for Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, okay? The first is talking about the allele frequency. So we're looking at the gene pool as a whole. We're going to be talking about the total alleles in the population, so not individual organisms, but if we combine all of their alleles into a gene pool, then we would see that all of the alleles add up to 100% of the alleles, or since we're using decimals, all of the dominant alleles represented by P plus all of the recessive alleles represented by Q are going to equal 1. All right. Genotype frequency is now talking about the individuals. So P squared is going to re represent the fraction of individuals that are homozygous dominant. 2PQ is going to represent the fraction of individuals that are heterozygous, and Q squared is going to represent the fraction of individuals that are homozygous recessive. Remember that if they give you homozygous, dom or homozygous phenotype information, that is including both of these types of individuals, so you can't separate them unless you know that Q allele value first. Okay. So we look at rock pocket mouse problem number three, we have, just like at school, I can't remember where I put the marker, a thousand mice and 360 of them display the dark color dominant phenotype, okay? The question is asking how many of those 360 are actually homozygous dominant, okay? Now, this 360 is referring to both of these types of individuals, so I can't get that information directly from that number, but what I can do is figure out oh, how many individuals are homozygous recessive. So if I work it backwards and say I have 1,000 mice, 360 of them have that dark phenotype that is, home, that is dominant, that means 640 of them are displaying that recessive phenotype, all right? So by taking that 640 out of 1,000 and getting 0.64, this is going to equal my Q squared, okay? Once I have Q squared, then I can take the square root of it to get Q, which in this case is going to be 0.8, all right? Now that I have 0.8 equaling Q, I can go back to this allele frequency and very easily see that P is going to be 0.2. So 
P plus 0.8 equals 1. So P equals 0.2. If I want to know how many individuals then are displaying that homozygous dominant phenotype, 0.2 squared would be my P squared. It's going to be 0.04 of the population. So times 1,000, 40 individuals of the 360 are going to have that homozygous dominant genotype. Um, I hope this was helpful. It's taken me quite a few takes to get it even to this point between kids and dogs and whatnot. Um, miss you guys. I hope to make more videos that are a little bit better than this one and um, you know, work hard the next few days to get through to spring break. All right, I will see you guys later.